In recent years here in Italy, organizations have been going through a period of great changes as well as great euphoria. Company profits have never been so good as in recent years. In 1988, Italy had an economic growth rate that was second only to Japan among industrialized nations. If we look back 10 or 15 years, however, to the years following the oil crisis, we see that only very few firms were successful then and still are now. And just as there are very few in Italy, there are very few in Europe, in the United States, in Japan and the whole world. We call these companies companies of excellence. Ten years ago, two American colleagues of mine, Tom Peters and Bob Waterman, asked themselves the question, what are the common traits of all these companies of excellence? And they set about looking into these companies of excellence in America, where information was more readily available. They analyzed companies in very different sectors, IBM and Hewlett Packard in the sector of high technology, Levi Strauss, Johnson & Johnson and Procter Gamble, manufacturers of consumer goods, service companies such as McDonald's or Walt Disney. For 20 or 30 years, these companies have constantly turned out profits. What are the common traits of these companies? Their research, which I played an indirect part in too, took a number of years, but produced results that were astounding to say the least. The common feature of these companies was not a sophisticated managerial system, a well-oiled organization, a bonus scheme or the opposite, a penalty scheme, a reporting system or a policy plan involving all the notions you learn at business school. No, what they had in common were certain principles, certain rules which were understood, widely known, intensely felt throughout the whole company and followed, as they put it, almost fanatically. What are these rules, these principles of excellence? There are only five of them, and they are simple to explain. The first rule is to have an innovative approach, meaning that the whole organization has to be able to change, to be able to transform when requirements dictate such a course of action. The second rule is to remake contact, in other words, to inform and communicate intensely at all levels and throughout the whole company. The third rule is to live for the customer, which means orienting the whole company almost obsessively, fanatically towards the real boss, the customer, the person who ensures results at the end of the day. The fourth principle is to promote individual commitment, taking advantage of resources that are often ignored, but which are far and away the most important in the whole company, people, the company's workforce. The fifth rule is to instill company values throughout the whole organization. In other words, to apply deep-rooted aims and ordinary values to reinforce all operations, motivations and goals of the whole company. After the publication of the book the Principles of Excellence, which sold in vast numbers throughout the world, some companies recognized that they too followed these principles. Others were inspired by them and set about making a series of changes oriented towards these principles of excellence. In Italy, one of the groups that most clearly and consciously followed this path, well ahead of any others, was the Same Lamborghini Hurleman Group. We are the guests today in the office of the Managing Director, Mr. Gerald Hampel. Is it true, Mr. Hampel, that the principles of excellence have been the driving force behind the spectacular changes that have taken place in your company during the last four years? Definitely. We have made a remarkable turnaround. 
In 1988, our net profit margin, compared to turnover, was the highest for the world's tractor industry. And not just for the tractor industry, but for the whole of the world's farm machine industry. We are the world's sixth biggest manufacturers, and we depend on innovation to a great extent, not only for products such as tractors, but also for the whole tractor system, which in the future is expected to run the whole farm. The great efforts that we have made in reorganizing manufacturing and management to the full have enabled us to upturn an extremely critical situation, regaining our competitiveness on a technological level and making a notable all-round financial improvement. Compared to the losses of 1984 and the little more than symbolic profit of 86, the 1988 consolidated net profit was over 37 billion Italian lira, or 7.2% of turnover, a percentage figure that is well up on 1987 too. Her growth in turnover, increased volume of sales, an important export business, and the paying off of all financial charges have spelled a success that has been made possible by consciously keeping to the path of excellence. The winning path, as shown by Peters and Waterman, and in which you from Innova are direct partners. Of course, I wholeheartedly agree with this strategy. Clearly, if I hadn't, I wouldn't have chosen you as consultants to work alongside me in this venture from the very beginning, since before I was even managing director, when, as a director of SAME, I drew up the company's strategic policy. Yes, that's what it all boils down to. I believe that we have worked together efficiently during the last four years. We as consultants and witnesses of excellence, and you together with the SAME management. Would you like to go through events step by step? perhaps referring to one of the principles of excellence, or rather to those that have made the greatest contribution to this phase of revitalization at SAME. In other words, to live for the customer and to instill an innovative approach throughout the organization. More than anything else, we made a far-reaching policy decision when we decided to dedicate our attention almost obsessively to the customer. In other words, we changed our way of thinking. Before, we were simply tractor manufacturers. Now, we are consultants for anyone who needs to use a tractor, not only advising people as to how to use the vehicle, but also, on a far wider scale, helping the farmer to work better, with improved efficiency. Here, we've learned the lesson the companies of excellence give to anyone who wants to listen. We firmly believe that the customer is the be-all and the end-all of our very existence. Everything we do is proof of this. And people have realized this and rewarded us accordingly. This is why we no longer turn out agricultural machinery to move things around in fields with. Instead, we produce versatile, adaptable, multi-purpose equipment that is easy to use, powerful and innovative. The tractor has become a powerful motorized unit that enables farmers to carry out all their jobs, saving time and money and increasing efficiency. This is how we respond to our customers' needs. Today, they can come to us and be sure of finding what they require. In this context of making the most of our products on behalf of the customer, we first of all set about making changes to the basic product. Bearing in mind customer requirements, we developed many technologically advanced, reliable systems. 
In the 90 horsepower segment, for example, we conquered 40% of the market with a model that was innovative, both in construction, being much lighter than previous models, and in operations. It has a front as well as a rear lifting gear, which means that combined lifting can be carried out. And a rear loader can be fitted to turn it into a multi-purpose machine of an industrial type. We call this system dual track. <coughs> Living to serve the customer, as we try to do, means responding to needs that are expressed. And that's already saying a lot. But we also have to try to imagine latent requirements needs that are not explicit, but important all the same. We must satisfy these kinds of needs before they become active, and this is the challenge for excellence that we must meet. Another example is specialized cultivations. Fruit and grape growers have always needed a compact machine that can go under vines and nets and between rows of trees without anything jutting out that might spoil the fruit or damage the branches. Moreover, it must be maneuverable and light for easy handling, as well as powerful to cope with frequently difficult operating conditions. But even more so, the same machine should help the farmer to carry out other secondary jobs, eliminating a proliferation of equipment and reducing costs. This has led to our special tractors, the vigneto for vineyards and the fruttetto for orchards, low compact machines that are light but powerful, versatile and maneuverable. These are products that have resulted from listening to customers' needs. And since a customer cannot simply be thought of as a potential buyer, but as someone who needs assistance with a whole range of requirements, we have greatly developed our after-sales service and the company's ability to be an authentic consultant for farmers. The sales organization has been expanded and made significantly more professional. We have organized massive training programs, specially designed for our frontline staff, because this is the best investment that we can make. We have even taken very innovative steps with new sales promotion methods, as far as both concepts and aims are concerned. Take these sales manuals, as we call them, or these cassettes, our video library, for example. With these, our frontline staff put people, future customers, in direct contact with the company in all its essential elements. A company such as ours, operating on an extremely difficult market, cannot hope to improve and consolidate its position without becoming excellent. In marketing, excellence implies an approach whereby we are constantly seeking contact with customers to give them effective, complete answers to their needs. As far as the product is concerned, we question the very idea of the tractor in order to see whether this idea was able to meet changed market requirements in a satisfactory way. As far as customer service is concerned, we redesigned the role of the sales networks, building up a wide-ranging advisory function in order to assist farmers and solve their problems as best possible. The concept at the root of all this was viewing the person selling our products not as the last pawn in the hierarchy, but as a true partner in our operations, 
actually involved in the whole process of production and sales. Today, it is no longer conceivable that a company makes products that are then sold by someone who only has a rough idea of how they work. Our dealers have become excellent partners precisely because we have made them part of our work. Of course, we have had to provide continual training, but above all, we have had to reconvert the dealers' relationships with customers. Today, dealers take on commitments based on effective marketing plans, which the sales force draws up with us, bearing in mind the actual makeup of an area, the customers, the competition, their potential and capacity for development. In other words, we turned our business mentality inside out, and it has borne fruit because it responds to basic requirements, to those often forgotten sayings full of common sense, such as great oaks from little acorns grow. Excellence stems from small, constant steps forward. An example can be given stemming from the logic of project work one of the cornerstones of our management policy. There can be no doubt that it has been complicated, but it has borne fruit, in part thanks to a very efficient method of participating in operations that has been introduced to the company by Innova, who, indeed, were brought in for this very purpose, the projects of excellence. Basically, they involve a vast network of multifunctional intervention at all levels of the company's operations, urging, shaping and encouraging commitment and results. In the marketing sector, for example, we have established synergies and collaboration between central marketing and sales networks in order to fix product prices on the various markets systematically involving all the other interested parties in the company. This has led to a definition of the roles of the group's three trademarks, which, we believe, are well-balanced and safe from the point of view of relations with competition. This is just one example, but I believe it clearly illustrates the idea of little acorns developing into great oaks. Yes, these methods, which are practical, simple and customer-oriented, are the ones that have proved to be the most effective in companies of excellence. In fact, they are quite simple methods, they are not sophisticated, and all that is necessary is for the whole organization, the managing director, the directors, the managers and the workers, to believe in them profoundly. Yes, that's right. You've got to believe wholeheartedly. We've always believed in innovation and in serving the customer ever since Cassani, which was then just one workshop, put together the first diesel-powered tractor. That is why it was easier for us to find these values again when we decided to take this path to save and revitalize the company. Yet these concepts seemed to have been forgotten four years ago when we began this process of innovation. That's true. Excellence is a question of great commitment every day. Even though the company had been very successful in the past, it had become apathetic, strictly divided into roles and departments, and they never communicated. Unable to make the most of the traditions and human resources available. Excellence, as you have rightly said, is a matter of lots of small daily actions that are coherent and shared by everyone and carried out almost fanatically. In recent years, we have made an important change in the kind of work that is carried out within the organization's individual units. In other words, we have gone from a system based on mainly bureaucratic 
formal working conditions to a system that stresses the concepts of roles, above all of responsibilities, or better still, of interrelated roles. Like many other people, we have realized that the answer to company problems, in particular to achieving the goals set for each individual sector of the company, could only be possible by taking a multifunctional approach. Consequently, we set up a framework according to this principle, encompassing simple structures that were fairly agile and flexible and completely different from those of the past. They were generally project-based, highly target-oriented, requiring great professional skills from all those that were involved in these operating programs. The aim has always been to improve the quality of service, the level of service, customer orientation and the capacity for innovation in company sectors. I believe that the results that we have obtained since this program has been underway have been particularly fruitful. This is not a traditional class and lecture based training program. Instead, it is a very practical program with a good deal of participation, mainly based on a series of innovative lines of conduct to be put into practice in the day-to-day -day running of the company. The sum total of this has been the creation of a noticeable change in attitudes within the company. However, after having discovered the concept of the inside customer, which is one of the basic concepts for the school of excellence, what do we mean by inside customer? The outside customer is a clear enough concept. A customer who's not part of the company and buys our products. The customer who makes use of our services. The inside customer means something different. Every worker within a company receives services, flows of information and outputs typical of each individual sector of activity from higher up. But it is also just as true that each worker within the company gives other workers lower down the scale, other customers as we call them now, a series of services, a series of information, a series of flows of information a series of activities that are necessary for the other worker to fulfill his or her duties and fulfill specific objectives. I believe that this discovery and the implementation of the idea has created an incentive within each unit of the organization, within every worker, to verify the gap between the actual situation and a hypothetical level of excellence as to the level of service received and the level of service provided to inside customers. We therefore have inside customers and inside suppliers. I believe this has acted as a springboard, an incentive to everyone to devise and then put into practice small or large improvements in order to bridge the gap. I believe that it is in some ways the key to the success of our plan to achieve excellence. That in practice is the new concept of quality as indicated by Peters and applied here every day. First and foremost, there's the question of product quality. We ensure quality by using the most advanced control technology at all levels and in all aspects. I could list many examples. 
from the decision to develop a new galvanizing system for tractor body sheets in order to eradicate rust problems, to improvements in cab interiors to make them more ergonomic and safer. An overall example is the care that we have taken in designing, checking, testing and of course manufacturing the latest jewel in our crowd, the Antares 100 engine. A truly extraordinary machine thanks to its power to weight ratio and its performance. And then there is the quality of our assistance and consultancy services, which at times are of paramount importance. Global quality based on many small ordinary factors, based also on major production and policy decisions. That is what makes us different from the rest.